We've lost a couple of games in the past few weeks and what that has resulted in is us no longer being first in the division. Now we are 9-3 and three, and it is week 14 and you figure that guarantees us a playoff spot as long as we win one or two more games even, even as a wildcard team. However, one of the main reasons that we are only second in the division is not because we are not as good as we should be. It's simply that we haven't played as many games in the division as the Ravens. So the Ravens right now have played one more division game than us. All we need to do is win one and we will be tied with them again. And I believe then on whatever the next tiebreakers are, we should go ahead of them. But more importantly, I think we can win out the season. I don't know if the Ravens can. I don't know who they're playing. So we got the Steelers, Bengals, Seahawks and Dolphins left to play. And I think we can definitely get three wins out of that schedule. Will that give us enough wins? to take back the division lead from the Ravens. I hope so. The division lead is very important because the difference isn't just either playing in the wildcard round or going straight to the divisional. It's also home field advantage throughout the playoffs. We and the Ravens are the highest seeded teams in the AFC. So whichever one of us ends up leading the AFC North, if nothing changes dramatically for other teams, will get home field advantage throughout the playoffs. And of course, that's significantly more important than just being a division leader or getting a wildcard spot as a team with a good record. So it's very important we get back this division lead and it starts here against the Steelers. And let's just get into this game and try and do what we did to them the last time we saw them. So the targets this week, 75% completion percentage, 200 team passing yards, that's possible. And what a start to this game, a turnover at the 24 yard line. Great field position, we have to capitalize on this. It's so important that we win every game that we can. But we've also got to remember, yes, we beat the Steelers, but it's not going to be that easy to do it again. So here we go, third and nine. This is a big one here. And we've got Coleman on the outside. If he catches this, gets out of bounds. Good play. We get the first down. We've got a chance here to get six. All right, we've got to watch this blitz off the left side. Roll out the pocket. Look at that, leaving us a huge space. We saw the blitz coming off the left. We go to the right, find ourselves a rushing lane, and we're in for a rushing touchdown. We get those six points off the turnover the defense gave us. And this is exactly the start we needed against the Steelers, who will still be reeling from the butt whooping we gave them when they came to visit us. Let's go second and ten. Well, there's a lot of pressure always coming in, but we can run off it. Oh, and the Duke there, out of bounds, although we probably could have kept on going. But we will take that. Okay, so this one could be interesting, especially because they're doing that. Especially because they're blitzing the safety over Walker, and we get a big pick up there. Again, we're moving the ball. I say we're moving the ball well. Two for five right now, but when we need it, we can do it. Sometimes we we do plays that confuse me. No, no, I didn't mean to. Oh, no. That was not even close to what was supposed to happen. I think, I think the defense knew what level of an accident that was. So they get us the ball back at the 22-yard line. Now, honestly, you know, no excuses, but that simply just wasn't what was... Even the intended target. So we're going to have to stick to some bread and butter plays right now. As we try and beat these guys. Despite all the pressure they're getting on us. And to be honest, maybe we should just run all day long. That'll help. I actually really like this play for deeper things. Because the deeper it goes, the better chance of success there is, I find. And we find Coleman for the first down. No problem. We like it long. And Terrell Pryor. Terrell Pryor is free. Breaks away. Catches it. Is into the end zone. Crowder couldn't get free on that side. The second prior comes in there, manages to do it, gets the long touchdown. So we've hit the two-minute warning, and we're really just now looking at grinding it out. I don't think the Steelers would even take any timeouts here. Christian McCaffrey not making the best choice there, but picked up an extra yard being rolled over that way. A long field goal attempt, which we did get, and now we're in the second half. Score 20 to nothing as we enter this. And a chance to go down and make this even worse for the Steelers. And we start with a good run by McCaffrey. Can this maybe turn around now for the running game in the second half? Are you going to give us another chance? We will take another chance. And Pryor with a nice catch as well. I was a little... I was waiting for confirmation it was actually caught. We can do whatever we want right now. But I'm not going to, you know, start playing silly. Because we have thrown an interception already today. And we don't want to throw any more. So let's run into this look. And McCaffrey had so much space to go. He already just went for seven yards by the time he met someone on the second level. It was six. I estimate by one yard over every time. Looking at slants here. Although, I don't really... No, we do like the look. Can we throw it out quickly? Yes, we can to Crowder. 
I was a little bit worried about that, but we had to get rid of it. There was a lot of people coming. I mean, the defense is stopping nothing to get a shutout today. So let's help them out here by, you know, giving them some better field position at the very least. So let's see what we get here. Throwing it away. Just had to throw it away, but it turns out Crowder was open. I was only throwing it because I didn't want to give up the safety. And Crowder for a 94-yard touchdown. That is not what the plan was. But it works out in our favor. Wow. All I wanted to do was avoid being hit in the end zone. But Crowder, for the first time today, really beat his man. Was open. Probably was actually a bad decision to just try and throw it away at him. But it worked out. Well, and now that's not our fault. We gave you the field position. The defense giving up their shutout. Allowing three points to go on the board. The score right now, 30-3. to three. No idea why the Steelers allow us to score so many points against them. So back with the ball again at the 25-yard line. We've been playing a very even game today. Apparently 20 rush attempts, 20 pass attempts. Although those rush attempts are going to go up now. And Christian McCaffrey with the huge play. The Duke to get through a crowd. Can he take it all the way? No. He gets tackled at the 10-yard line. And all of a sudden, after a bad day, he's over 100 yards rushing. Just from one play. So first and 10 at the 10 now. Why not hand it off to McCaffrey again? Who is just not able to finish off what he started on that play? Now Best is in the backfield with us. And why not hand it off to him? And Best is in for the touchdown. Our second string running back here. Comes up with a few plays. I'm sure McCaffrey would have loved that one. But he had a chance. He had two chances. And Best finishes that one off. And we're going to go for a short completion here on a pass. Because, well, we had a daily... Do a weekly goal, rather. And we want to complete it. And the short pass is about to turn into a lot more by complete accident. To Laney Walker going down to the 23-yard line. Everything we do today is working. And half the time, it's not even supposed to. So I was only trying to get the 200-team air yard goal. We had 94%. Well, we're not going to run into that, are we? I mean, we don't want to pass it, really. We don't need to. But if you're going to give us the look... And we go there to Pryor, and he is stopped short. But, like I said, we had 94%. I just wanted, like, I don't know, 10, 20 yards. That's it. And we get a lot more. We are not trying to run the score up on the Steelers, is all I can say at this point. I know we are running the score up on the Steelers, but we're not trying to. <laughs> we just can't not. So the Steelers got in for a touchdown, so the score right now, 44-10. to 10. But after that complaint about the defense last week... They are back to playing their absolute best football. I kept forgetting to chew the clock. And, oh, we couldn't get the first down there. I tell you what, when we set off just on an actual run, we are so quick. And there we have it. Game over. The game finishes at a score of 44 to 10. And it's, I mean, I can't wait to see these stats because everybody had a great day. Offense, everybody was getting a bunch of touches, passes, touchdowns. Defense got a whole bunch of turnovers as well. Cannot wait to see these stats. So here we go. We did not get our weekly goal of 75% completed passes. We only got 60. Three touchdowns, one interception, which was just, you know, unfortunate. It was an unfortunate blemish on the day that didn't need to happen if you just press the right button. But it is what it is, and it didn't really affect us whatsoever. Rushing, Christy McCaffrey, 19 attempts, 118 yards, 6.2 yards per carry. That was looking a lot worse at one point. And all of a sudden, he exploded and took himself over 100 for the day. We went 8 for 62 and a touchdown. And then Ruben Best, our second string running back, one touch, four yards, but a touchdown. Receiving, turns out it was pretty split just amongst four guys, but they're the only four guys I really want to ever throw to anyway. So don't have a problem with that. Jameson Crowder, four for 119 and a touchdown. Delaney Walker, four for 86. No touchdown. Terrell Pryor, three for 74 and a touchdown. And then Corey Coleman with, you know, he's got the down-to-earth numbers. 3 for 37 and a touchdown, 12.3 yards per catch. Jameson Crowd apparently with three drops, although none of them were really, you know, an actual drop pass. More just was about to catch it and got hit, so we don't mind that. Defensive, Jamar Taylor, Christian Kirksey and Jabril Peppers leading the team with six tackles each. Sacks, one and a half for Jamie Collins, one and a half for Danny Shelton, half a sack for Christian Kirksey, half a sack for Jabril Peppers. An interception for Jabril Peppers as well, as well as for Trey Waynes. Those two interceptions were the two turnovers for the day. And we absolutely 
disassembled this Steelers team. So that is it for this one. Let's advance the week. I feel like we might have a chance at Offensive Player of the Week again. We did have a good week. Three passing touchdowns, one rushing touchdown, and a bunch of yards. And it was not good enough because apparently Blake Bortles had a great week. 369 passing yards, five passing touchdowns. Right, so this game against the Bengals is our next one. They are four and nine. Let's see if we are first in the division again. I forgot to look. Yes, we are because the Ravens lost another game. So there we are, back at the forefront of this whole thing. Let's play these Bengals. We get to host them at home. It's a divisional game, so it's going to be tougher regardless of the opponent. But I think after what we did to the Steelers, and after the defense has just come back, I pointed out how they've been letting us down a little bit. And now, if anything happens, I feel like it's going to be on us because they have come back to full strength, just dominating teams. One of the top five defenses in the NFL. Let's see if we can't beat these Bengals. So the goals this week, no more than two turnovers and score two touchdowns. I think we can do that, but we'll turn that to score two touchdowns into score two passing touchdowns and we'll get our level three season goal as well. So this is our final divisional game of the season and it starts off strong with a turnover. So we get the ball here at the 38 yard line. So after a decent run by McCaffrey on the first play, second and five, looking for Coleman. On a route he runs so well, we get the first down there. We're now already in the red zone. Okay, this is interesting. I'll take this. Love a good bootleg. Love a good bootleg. There was something there. Oh, look at that. There was something there with Pryor, but decided to go for it ourselves 14 yards later at the six yard line. All right, here we go. Christian McCaffrey's touchdown play. Not called his touchdown play because he always gets touchdowns with it. Simply called his touchdown play because he sometimes gets touchdowns with it. Can we flip it? Let's see. Go McCaffrey. No, McCaffrey. Okay, we're going to have to pass here. All right, we tried McCaffrey's touchdown play. What about Corey Coleman's touchdown play, which is called that because he always gets touchdowns on it. And here we go. Corey Coleman in on the slant. Absolutely incredible. Now, he's not quite Calvin Johnson with the fades, but down here you really should be double teaming him because those slants are vicious and he gets in for a touchdown more often than he doesn't and it's quite a lot. And look at that, the defense continuing to hold strong. Bengals hardly getting any yards off them either and we can start again on the ground and just do what we did the last time. And McCaffrey with the big hole and it shut down pretty quickly actually, but almost 10 yards on that one. It's probably not even one yard McCaffrey, we're giving you an inside zone, it's a normal run. Can you do something with it? Yes you can and it's more than just the one yard we needed. <laughs> which on those kinds of runs is rare. But I guess we'll take it. They're dropping into single. Dropping into single, blitzing from the left side, which means the right side is kind of wide open. Let's get out of bounds here, not losing the ball in the red zone. We're down to the 10 yard line. Another chance for another touchdown. There we go, second and 10. We could be looking at some odd people here. Nope, 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 nope. We're in for the touchdown. <laughs> I thought we might have been throwing to Ricardo Lewis or even throwing to McCaffrey, but <laughs> Nope, it ended up working out that we can just weave through there, all that traffic, perfect missing us. We get be able to get around whoever that is tackling us. In for the touchdown, we're up 14 to nothing. And we have another chance because the Bengals just want us to have the ball. They've heard about our, you know, our battle for the MVP and they want to help us out here. Perfect, it's coming down on us but not going to catch us. Oh, you got in our way, Pryor. You just got in the way of our MVP trophy. But now seven yards should be close enough for Corey Coleman's touchdown play. And no, we fumbled. We couldn't get rid of it. We can't get up either. Come on, we can catch him. We can catch him. We can catch him. And we managed to tackle him. We fumbled the ball before we were able to throw it. Corey Coleman was open too. Uh, let's just blame blame an offensive lineman for that rather than the fact we lost the ball. And could this be a turning point in this game as the Bengals capitalized on that turnover for a touchdown? That was very annoying. It's a shame because the touchdown was there as well. That's the worst part. All right, we've got... This is one of the ones where we've got a few options. And Pryor is one of those options. Pryor, come on. I don't, I don't think that even counts as a drop. It was probably a broken up pass. But watch this on a crowded touchdown. Is it going to be a crowded... Oh, he was open. But we're just selfish. We just want it all ourselves. We want that MVP trophy. We run in. This is college football tours. We are just completely ball hogging. Now, to be fair, I could have thrown it a couple of times. But when it's open, it's open. We don't actually get that many rushing touchdowns either. Although this game has been a little bit of a Lamar Jackson show, you know, featuring some other players. So first and 10, 121 left in the first half. And a play that I don't tend to find too much success on. 
But in theory, I like. And there we go. There's the success. Pryor taking it out of bounds as well. Stopping the clock. We got a chance to at least get a field goal here. But we could do better with 1 minute 12 left. So we're in the second half now. We obviously got that field goal. And that was about it. And we start off here with a nice... Oh, I say we start off. We obviously already started off. <laughs> we, we start off here with me talking with a nice run by McCaffrey. So third and two. Just looking for the first down. Just looking for the first down. We got it. We can't slide and we fumble the ball. <laughs> Walker <laughs> started off the wrong way, but everybody around him was on the floor. So he was able to come and get the first down anyway. So here we go. Running a flood again. And oh, managed to get out of that trouble. And we've got the speed to get out of it a little bit more. And we've got the speed to get out of it even more and pick up a lot of yards. And right now... If we're just being held to the same standard as running backs, we're looking at a very, very good game and offensive player of the week after eight rushes, 94 yards and two touchdowns. So holding by our resident holder, Austin Pastor makes it first and 20. Oh, you're going to play single safety against us, huh? Just try us. Just try us. You won't like us. You won't like... No, no, too much air. Too much air, but he caught it. Wow, Crowder. What a play... It should have been more of a laser than thrown that much into the air. But how did he come down with that? Look at this. Far too much air. Let the safety get over there. But Crowder could not care less. Just takes it from him. I'm not the only person on the team. And success does not come from greed. We've got to spread it out. Got to get everybody involved. Let's get Corey Coleman involved again. Nope. No, we're not going to run. Don't worry. We're going to throw away... I tell you what, I can't remember the last time Delaney Walker had a touchdown. Now, is that foreshadowing? I don't know, but I'm just saying I can't remember the last time he had a touchdown. He's not getting one right now. I don't know what happened there. I mean, I know what happened there, of course. And again, we're getting greedy, and I said that's happening. Delaney Walker there gets the ball back for us. Which has happened twice now. He's bailed us out twice. Let's throw him a touchdown. You know what, Walker? We can get you maybe on the next play, maybe on another drive. But right now, we've got a chance here for Christian McCaffrey to get a touchdown on one of the few chances he gets to get a touchdown. And he does get it. So, Walker, you've earned yourself more than one touchdown today. And we will try and get it to you. But we couldn't resist this chance to get McCaffrey another one because he doesn't get enough rushing touchdowns. So, here we go. First and 10 on the 32-yard line. And again, some trouble here, managing to get around the outside of that one. This guy is not fast enough for us. But I think the problem is we're now trying to force something to Delaney Walker. We've just got to give it to him if it happens to be there. Third and six. Come on now. Somebody make a play. Delaney Walker, make a play. There you go. Delaney Walker has been so good for us today. And I think that might be his first reception. He's, his, his impact has been in fumble recoveries. All right, this could be something. No, we couldn't. But Pryor's wide open. Don't steal his touchdown, Pryor. Don't steal his... He got stopped at the one-yard line. He was fighting in. That was very close. I don't know why the one man we want to throw to here isn't even on the field. We're just going to have to go in ourselves. That's not a fumble. That's going to count as a fumble. I hope that gets automatically reviewed and turned over. Because obviously they know it's a touchdown. <laughs> We're going to have another fumble on record. That's not fair. We want to throw to Walker. He wasn't, even on the, he wasn't even on the field. And chances basically are up now. We're beating the Bengals 38-16. to 16. There's 2 minutes 32 left. So, of course, it's just about running the clock out right now with McCaffrey, who made a bad decision. Second and eight. Another handoff, of course, and another bad run and a flag. That's interesting. So, some more holding makes it second and 18, which... It's just more interesting, and McCaffrey was doing a good job there if those other guys wouldn't have been stood around like lame ducks. So third and 14, we could of course use a first down. So we're going to try and get one, but this man coverage isn't good for us, and nobody's coming back to that. You know, I, I figured no one would intercept it. <laughs> no one's going to catch it either, though. So they did make it a little bit closer. They did get down for a touchdown, and with two seconds left, this one run will end this game no matter how far it goes. It goes for one yard, but we run out the clock and we are done. We win our final divisional game of the season and we finally win both games in an episode for the first time in quite a while. Winning 38 to 24. Taking a look at the stats, they don't look good passing. 51% completion percentage, 27 attempts as well, 136 yards for a single touchdown. However, we were a running back today. First, Christian McCaffrey, 17, 69, four yards, one touchdown. That's still very good numbers. To say he didn't get too much done today, averaging four yards is still very good, but we kind of took the biscuit on that one. 13 attempts, 166 yards for three touchdowns, two fumbles. There were not three fumbles. 
but who cares? Receiving, Terrell Price, 6 for 49, Corey Coleman, 3 for 31, James Crowder, 2 for 39. No one really having a great day, because like I said, we just had two running backs today. Defensive, Christian Kirksey with 10 tackles, but Ryan Anderson was tied for the most tackles on the team with 10, also has one and a half sacks. Manuel Ogba has one and a half sacks, and Jamie Collins has one sack as well. Interceptions, one by Jamar Taylor, one by Jabril Peppers, that's two weeks in a row now Jabril Peppers has got an interception, then a forced fumble by Jamie Collins, a forced fumble by Rashad Dawson, both of those recovered as well, I assume either one recovered the others and the other returned the favour or they both recovered their own, oh they're both at Southern Miss as well, so look at that, maybe they just do each other favours. Great day from the defense there with those stops. That is it for this one. We win two games. We're 11 and 3. We've got a chance to take home field advantage through the playoffs, and it's all just going our way right now. Ah!